Hey 412, welcome back to 412 Night Live. I am so glad that you could join us this evening for a night of teaching and fellowship, even though we're away from one of each other still. And it's so much fun. We are so excited that you could be here this evening. First of all, I would like to introduce myself for those of you that do not know me. My name is Caitlin Bean and I'm a part of the 412 leadership team here at Marion Methodist and I serve on the worship interns um, Sunday mornings and I am not graduated actually. I just graduated from Northland um, this year and so I'm so excited and grateful for all the opportunities that you guys have given me here um, at Marion Methodist and so thank you guys so much. Um, I love you guys and 412 has been such a blessing. You guys are the best. I want you guys to know that. You guys are the best. Um, I want you guys, I want to personally invite you guys to game night on Monday. Woo -woo. Game night is so much fun. The boys, they came through. We had very limited numbers, very limited numbers, but the boys came through and now the score is five to three. They're still down five to three, but the boys won. Round of applause for the boys. <laughs> I also want to invite you guys to our Zoom hangout on Saturday. This is where we can just kind of chill. There's no teaching really. It's just kind of a time for us to hang out and be with one another like we would at Culver's after church or um, between the middle school and high school service or um, during dining time at the church. So this is just a fun opportunity for us to come and hang out with one another um, while we're still physically um, social distancing. Also, we still have Instagram duos going. This is such an awesome opportunity to hear from our adult leaders, our student leaders, and um, just kind of still learn and hear the word of God um, and encouragement while we're going through this time. So I invite you guys to get on Instagram and turn on those notifications so you get notified when we're going live on Instagram. I am so excited for you guys to hear the sermon today and then and next week as well. We are going to be diving deep into faithfulness, um, which is going to be super awesome and led by our student leadership team. I want to talk about God's faithfulness in my life, though. The past year and a half, I have been very overwhelmed with college. And like I said, I just graduated this year and there's been a lot of dread dread with going to college, dread with leaving my family, and dread with starting new. I'm not one to like change. I'm not one to, I like to get out of my comfort zone, but I'm not one to um, be okay with getting out of my comfort zone sometimes. And so God has really shown his faithfulness to me the last month, um, which is giving me a lot of peace and comfort um, and assurance that I'm going to be okay. He through a lot of prayer and through a lot of scripture reading, he has revealed himself to me. And it has been really, really comforting, guys, to know that when I'm gone at college, my brothers are gonna be okay. When I'm gone at college, my parents are gonna be okay. When my sister moves out to Wisconsin, June 1st, she's gonna be okay on her own. She's been okay on her own for the past four years while she's been at college, but she's gonna be completely on her own now. No roommates, no nothing. And so I'm very much a homebody. And so this whole college thing is like not my style, which is totally fine, totally fine. Um, but it's just that transition into putting your faith in God and God being faithful to his word. And God is, God is so faithful to his word, guys. And that's definitely what we're gonna be studying the next two weeks. And I'm so excited for you guys to hear um, what our student leadership team has to say um, over the next two weeks. And I hope you guys will be prayerfully um, considering what we are saying. Um, and you guys will be listening and opening up your hearts um, to what God is trying to say to you. I want to um, invite you guys to worship with us this evening um, as we go into this week. Have a great evening, guys.
So some background to the story of Noah. See, before God created all of the, the land and the animals and all of that good stuff, the world was dark, watery chaos. And <clears throat> so after he created all of the land and all of the trees and everything that grows, he created Adam and Eve. And then after that, obviously, Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit. This was the first sin, and it created a disconnect between humanity and God. See, this only got worse and worse and worse. It spiraled into now, Noah's time. Um, humanity was completely evil and was completely um, consumed by sin, except for Noah. See, Noah was described as blameless. And he also had favor with the Lord. That's why the Lord told him about his plan. The Lord told him that he has a plan to restore the earth and completely start from a clean slate.
God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy them both and the earth. What's up, Fort Hill? My name is Brock Hanna. I'm a part of the Fort Hill Leadership Team here at Marion Methodist. So today I want to dig into Noah's faithfulness and trust in God. And so I'm sure you guys know the story of Noah's Ark and the story of Genesis, but um, one of the points that I, and the moral stories that I want um, to talk about, one of the points is sometimes when the Lord puts something on our heart, we neglect it just so we can conform and live a so-called normal life. And so in Genesis 6, it talks about the detail and dimension of the Ark. It was enormous, 437 feet long, 73 feet wide, and 40 feet tall. So the work took some 42 to 50 years um, to build. That's, that's a very, very long time. That could be like half of our life or even more than that. Um, so the Bible answers our question of, well, did, did Noah question God when he asked him to build the ark? And, and the answer to that question is no. In fact, Noah proceeded to do accordingly to do that all God had commanded him. He just did so, and that's in Genesis 6, 22. Now, I'm not saying God is telling you or asking you to build some physical structure, but I'm saying there is one firm foundation in this world that um, we can build our love, our family, our friends, our life upon, and that um, that is our God, Jesus Christ. He's our Redeemer. And so, Noah had trust throughout all the time building the ark and um, when the flood came, when the, um, close to the end of the world came. There is obviously something right now that is bad that is going on right now in this world with COVID. But I ask you, um, are we all still taking up our cross just like Noah did and keeping that faithfulness and trusting um, our Lord? Or have we been sidetracked from the work God has called us to do and put it put in front of us um i love you guys so much i miss you um thanks for 12. i am going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens every creature that has the breath of life in it everything on earth will perish but i will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark you and your sons and your wife and your sons wives with you you are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures male and female to keep them alive with you two of every kind of bird of every kind of animal and every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you and to be kept alive you are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them noah did everything just as god commanded him the craziest thing about society today is the fact that we don't know what we can trust. I mean, think about it. You watch the news, you read articles, you scroll through Instagram or Twitter or TikTok or Facebook and you see things. And the first thing you think is, okay, but is it actually true? I mean, can I really trust what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing, what I'm reading? Like imagine if Noah would have done that to God. Noah's faithfulness is such an important and vital story that we can apply in our lives. Noah was faithful enough to say, all right, I'm ready to do whatever you need me to do because I trust that your word will come into fruition. It's easy to get caught up in what the world is saying and what the distractions that we face and not look at the one thing that will always remain constant, the word of God. Now, I know that God didn't give us a direct blueprint as to what was gonna happen over the past few months, but we have the truth the living truth, the Bible, the word of God, always on us, always with us, always there in our times of need and always there to pick us up and to give us a firm foundation and that solid reminder that God is with us. Faithfulness in God is so important because we know that God's word is true. Hey 412, the biggest thing we need to get from this is to remember that God's word is always true. And that's why it's so important to remain faithful no matter what. 
because God has a specific plan set out for us. All right, let's pray. Father, we know that it can be difficult to remain faithful when times are tough, and sometimes we fall short. Lord, we are asking for you, for you to give us the strength to remain faithful. We are asking for the strength to persevere no matter what might be thrown at us. God, we know you have a plan for each and every single one of us. And your plan is so much better than ours. Lord, you are always true, and that is why in your name we